story of life. And today I want to talk to you about reverse mortgages. The good, the bad, the ugly. And why am I bringing it up? I am not a banker. I am not a financial advisor. I do have a background in accounting, but the reason I'm bringing it up, and I've shared a little bit of this in the past when we were dealing with the estate of my father-in-law's house, there was a lot of ups and downs, but one of the things that really struck me as a real bad idea is a reverse mortgage. When my father-in-law decided to do this years ago, he did ask my husband and his sister, do you want the house? And both of us says we don't really care because at that time to sign up for a reverse mortgage, you will lose all your rights after you pass away. So that is something to keep in mind. Another thing that we were we learned back then is if you get sick and you're in the hospital and you're not able to do the transactions required and so forth, you can lose your house. You When you get out of the hospital, you might not have a home. Ask those questions. Seek legal counsel because those are things you need to be aware of. Now, have things changed since he did this? I think they're trying to get better because I think the courts are starting to see what a mess this is for many consumers who are left behind dealing with the reverse mortgage or while it's going on. So here's some good things, okay? The good good side of it. You can stay in your home longer as long as you're healthy. Um, it allows you to tap into your equity a little bit easier during financial challenges and stuff like that. Like home improvements to keep it up to date and you may be able to um, take care of trees falling, roof leaks, repairing appliances or replacing appliances. There are things that the reverse mortgage takes a load off your shoulders, which is a good thing because it allows you to do those things without worry because you have the equity of your home in this particular loan type thing that's going on. Now you can add to your retirement income if you choose to receive payouts from your reverse mortgage and you can get that monthly. And that way you'll have a reliable flow of cash. And this is why some people do it. You can pay off debt if you have unpaid medical bills or high, or high interest debt. You can pay off your balances with a lump sum distribution. So that's something that you can work out. You can leave your other retirement accounts alone. So drawing income from a reverse mortgage may help you avoid early withdrawal penalties from other accounts in your retor excuse me, retirement portfolio. So that's another nice feature. You'll have more financial freedom. You can use reverse loan funds however you like, giving you the flexibility to do what's important to you and your family. You can help out a child with college tuition, renovate your home, and meet special needs for you or your loved one's ages. You know what, this is a sales tip there, isn't it? Hang on, I am not selling this. I just want to remind you, do your due diligence and research, okay? And read the contracts before you sign. Your reverse income, your reverse mortgage income is not taxed. The IRS doesn't consider reverse mortgage payments that are coming to you as income, so they're not taxable. That's another great feature. Regardless of whether you receive them as a lump sum or monthly payments, line of credit, or any combination of the three. They will not be taxed. And, you know, we all, we hate paying taxes, but that's not a form of income because it is based on the asset of your home. <clears throat> you won't leave an underwater home in, to your heirs. Reverse loans have built-in protections that limit your heirs' responsibility for any remaining balances after you die. Okay. You don't have to meet debt to income ratios. No mortgage payment means less income is needed to qualify. However, a lender will need to verify that you can maintain your property taxes, your homeowner's insurance, and if applicable, your homeowner's association fees. You have to still be able to do that. And I do believe I read that you have to have a 650 um, credit score rating. 
So whether that's still, maybe they have different ways to work around it or not, you really want to have a good credit score. Your spouse can stay in the home after you die or move out. Even if your spouse wasn't the co bower on the loan, or this is what they're saying here, but it didn't really work out that way. Well, my mother-in-law had passed already, but they can stay in the home after you die or move into a long-term care if you were married at the time you took out the reverse mortgage. However, they must meet certain conditions set by HUD. So you got to understand what that little tweak is. They have to meet certain requirements. And so family members live in there. They can't stay. They have to move out. They become homeless. So unless your spouse was there with you signing this reverse mortgage, they cannot stay there. Um, so if you married later, it, it changes the whole dynamic. But if you decide to do this and you get remarried, seek legal counsel because they won't get anything and you want to have a way for them to have a place to live afterwards. So those are things to keep in mind. Now, the downside, your home's equity will shrink. So say your house value is at 400000 and you take a couple thousand dollars every month. That, mean your, that means your equity is going to continue to go down, so there will be nothing left. Now, your equity is what was, if you didn't owe anything on your home, that's your full value of your home. If you had debt to your to a mortgage company, that gets paid off first. And so that amount gets cut down again. So if there's a mortgage right now, please know that just because your house is valued at 400000 that does not mean that that's what you're going to get um, in terms of um, monthly payouts and stuff. So basically, because you are not paying down your reverse mortgage balance, you make less profit when you sell. Or limiting your power, power, <laughs> your power to borrow from others. You'll pay high upfront fees with with loan origination fees, which happens with a mortgage anyway, up to six thousand dollars upfront mortgage insurance premiums worth two percent of your home's value, and other closing costs. So reverse mortgages are actually more expensive than regular loans, home loans. So it's kind of one of those things you really have to decide how you want to go about this I know that for my husband and I the last thing we want is another debt something that's going to be weighing heavy on our hearts if we ended up saying okay we need money what are we going to do we will try to figure that out then but we will still steer away from reverse mortgages because of our recent experience will they change over the time I'm not sure remember that Banks, reverse mortgages are a bank. Credit cards, they're a bank. Car dealerships, everybody is in business to make money. So they will give you the good stuff. They might give you the other stuff that is um, responsible on your end, but you have to be willing to understand and accept every little key. You might be disqualified from other income benefits. So your like supplemental income, Medicaid may be impacted if you receive reverse loan payments. I'm not sure if if you needed fuel assistance. I don't know if that'll have an impact. There are things that you might not be able to do that could be very beneficial to you. <clears throat> you will reduce your heir's inheritance. That was why my father-in-law asked David and his sister if either of them wanted the house, which they both said no. <clears throat> And, um, but it reduces that. And the other thing does it say here? Oh, and if, so reverse mortgage balance grows, right? The equity of your heirs would receive it is diminished. So if they can't repay the loan when you pass away or move, they won't be able to keep the home. So you take a, a reverse mortgage, it's 400000 and then you get it down, there's $300,000 left. Your heirs have the option to buy the house for 300000 now. They have to go and get a loan, and they can take care of it, and they get, the money, they get the house. Most people who are heirs might already have a home, paying rent. 
they don't have the savings. They don't have that 300000 Now, could they get another house loan? I think they can if they're willing to buy the house. But then there are more fees involved. You got to weigh the good and the bad. A lot of people think that, well, when they die, they can inherit the family's home. That's not the case when you have a reverse mortgage. So if you're planning, if you're helping an elderly parent make this decision, know now that you more than likely will not get that home unless you have the money to pay off the debt, which is the asset of the home. You could lose your home to foreclosure. And how that happens, are you paying your taxes? You have to pay your taxes. Um, you have to pay your insurance. And if you default on any of this, you, you can lose your home to, um, for the tax one, for tax foreclosure. It can happen and it happens to people. A reverse mortgage lender can foreclose on the home if you are not living in it for more than 12 consecutive months due to health care costs. It used to be shorter, but now it's 12 months. So you get sick and you go into a nursing home and you think it's going to be temporary. 12 consecutive months, you can lose your home. But the payments might be able to help pay for your medical bills, which is what people have asked me. Can I use it for my medical bills? Well, yeah, but make sure you have insurance. Make sure, because there are insurances out there, we all have the availability to have health insurance. It's costly. You can't use a reverse mortgage loan to invest or for a vacation. So say you borrow 2000 say you think your living expenses will amount to about $2,000 a month or $4,000, whatever it is, you know what your living expense costs are going to be. And as of late, it's kind of doubled. But you can budget that in and you can get it. But you cannot get another couple thousand because you want to go on a cruise because that's not what it's used for. You can help your family with college. You can help um, repair your home. You can... There are basic things, but you can't do anything investing to make more money, and you can't go on cruises and stuff. So if that's what your plan is, you're not going to get it. And you will not get a tax benefit while the loan is in place. It's not like your typical home loan. You get to write off the tax. You get to write off the property tax that you pay in a regular loan, but in a reverse mortgage, you don't get to do that. Now, the amount of money you're able to borrow depends on the exact reverse mortgage company that you choose. The lender and analysis of your situation, including your age and home's value. The absolute maximum you, maximum you can qualify and is the maximum is 970,800 and that was in 2022. So, if you're looking at buying a $1 million home or your home is $1 million or more, you're probably not going to be able to get it unless you don't mind the value of it being less. So some requirements. You must be at least 62 years old. But although many people think of a reverse mortgage as a way for people to bridge the gap between age 62 and 66 when that's the full retirement age, if you wait until 66, you will be able to get a higher payout, meaning higher payout with when you go to retire. So if you use a reverse mortgage, I'm 63. If I didn't want my retirement income, I could put that on hold, reverse mortgage our home, and then hold it off so that I can get more. I don't even know if I can now because I started early retirement. <clears throat> Excuse me. Home equity. You must own the home outright or have significant equity which is about 50 percent and so those are some things to consider because remember they're going to pay off what you owe the residence must be your primary residence delinquent federal debt so if you owe taxes or student loans they can make you ineligible for a reverse mortgage so if you have those out there, don't even buy, bother trying. Property upkeep. You must continue to keep your home in good repair. And you know, that 
I mean, you do not want to live in a house that's falling down around you. It's not healthy for you. It's not good for you. And if you want to stay in your home, you got to keep it in good repair. So that's a requirement of a reverse mortgage. Now you're going to be required to do some housing counseling. So keep that in mind. It's through a HUD approved reverse mortgage counselor. I recommend making sure you have a lawyer on staff for you. Taxes and insurance, it's crucial to stay on top of your ongoing property taxes and homeowner's insurance. Otherwise, you could lose your house to a property tax lien for foreclosure. Now, in the same manner as regular loans, your loan is secured by your home. Your new mortgage pays off any existing home loans that you have. You must continue paying property taxes, homeowner's insurance, and HOA fees if you have them. You need to maintain your home. Fixed and variable rates are available. I didn't know that. Personally, I wouldn't do variable, but I don't like to buy a house variable either, so I kind of back off on that. So, I, it we mentioned um, if you're not paying the taxes, because you could lose your home. You know, even your city, after my father-in-law passed, we paid the taxes, even though we didn't have to pay the taxes because the reverse mortgage already knew he had passed. We paid it because of how we were treated. We didn't trust them. And we lost that quarter's taxes. That We lost it. They won't reimburse us. So there. Um, some of the mortgages, how they're different is you can receive your phone funds as a one lump sum or monthly payouts or a line of credit. You don't make any payments until you leave the home or die. So that is kind of like, oh, I don't have to make payments. I don't have a rent. I don't have any of that. You still have to keep your house up. You need to be able to, I, you really need to look at the fine print of what you can do. Your equity decreases as long as you own the loan. So consider taking those monthly payments if you choose this. Okay, so to sum it up, it's good if you are 62 or older, maybe. It might be a good option. You're in good financial standing. You and your spouse are physically able to maintain the house. You've considered the needs of your heirs. Like my father-in-law asked David, and he asked David's sister. Both of them were fine it, that he didn't leave the house to them. And the reason is is because you're going to have to pay off that loan in full. They will come after you. <laughs> so, And they will charge interest and not a little easy one. It's high. So you've built enough equity that you have a low mortgage balance and the payout from the reverse mortgage would cover your needs. Your home value is or has been increasing. Over the last few years, our houses have gone up. And... One of the things that happened with my father-in-law's, and we didn't know this, we thought he just took one reverse mortgage out. I think that the last one was his fourth. But what happened while we were dealing with it, the mortgage company somehow went bankrupt. And then we ended up with a new mortgage company. And it had the same contact number, had the same address and had the same everything which to me was like red flags going up everywhere could it happen yeah but the fact that they went bankrupt it's like you're a bank and it but it's also a sign to me that says if you went bankrupt doing all these reverse mortgages maybe you're doing something not right that's my personal opinion that's not legal advice that is just my feeling that if you're doing bad and then you have to sell it to another one so that you keep this stuff going. That's just my feeling. It's likely a bad idea if your home has sentimental value and either you or your family feel strongly that it should stay in the family. Don't do a reverse mortgage. You live with others who could easily move if you became, who couldn't easily move if you became disabled. Your health is shaky or unpredictable. When he took this out, he was fine. But, you know, we get older and things happen. So you have to be aware of that. You're planning to move soon. Don't do it. You need more than an FHA loan limit um, that it allows. Like if you need more than 
thousand dollars, then you might not be able to get it. Again, that number is from 2022, so that could have changed. Here we are at the end of 2023. Alternates to a reverse mortgage. If you want to borrow against your home equity, don't be fooled into thinking that a reverse mortgage is your only option. That is not true. In fact, in recent years, reverse mortgages were sometimes the least popular because they used to draw against your home's equity. Instead, they opted in greater numbers for home equity lines of credit. And this was something that I tried to explain to my father-in-law. You can get a line of credit based on the value of your home. So, and then there's cash out refinancings, home equity loans. Still, each of these loans, though, have their own requirements, meaning that you're going to have monthly costs to consider. So, let's see, what else did I have here? Now, one of the things, be very, very careful, the advertisement, and I guess there's one out there with Tom Selleck, that's a scam. Please don't go by the TV sales point on this. If you're watching a TV advertisement, please don't go that route. Seek out legal counsel. Go Call a real estate broker and ask them if they have a qualified lawyer that can help you. Now, the real estate agent that we used while we were closing on my father-in-law's house, she was superb. And now she didn't tell me the stories of things that she encountered with people who were left with a house from a reverse mortgage, but she did have a contact for a lawyer for us. And we weren't sure how things were going to go. There wasn't a lot of money to even think about how much this could cost. And they gave us some information. They were wonderful people. So if we're ever in a situation in reference to legal counsels for a home and stuff, I'm going to call our agent and say, what's their name again? Because they were very, very kind, very, very helpful. And they were not afraid to tell you the pitfalls of what you were dealing with. That's why I say, make sure you get a lawyer. Because even when we were calling the courts to finally start the probate and stuff, and they say, the reverse mortgages are so new and causing so much heartache to family members that there's nothing they can do. So, let's see, can you refinance a reverse mortgage? Yes, because my father-in-law always did this. And they're kind of like thieves in the dark in that they come in and they say, hey, we can do this because your house value is up. You can get more per month and stuff like that. It's true, but the moment you can't come back to your home, you're so sick, you're at the hospital for over a year, you have no home to go to. Now, how often does that happen? I don't know. My father-in-law stayed in his house until he passed. So that was a good thing. My daughter was living there, you know, helping and stuff like that. David and I were over there a couple times a month, if not more. We were doing, making sure the house was up, taken care of. Sometimes he hired people, the big jobs, because my husband doesn't take trees down. But my husband would try to put plug areas that had water leaking or fixing the washer machine, stuff like that. We were over there often because it was an older home and there were things that needed to be done. So was it a lot in terms of cost on our end? No, my father-in-law paid for everything, which was nice because he could get the money for the parts. He just didn't want to spend all outdoors to have repairmen come in because a lot of times repair people come in and give you a quote because you're old and they take advantage of you. So my husband, my father-in-law didn't like that. And that's why my husband wanted to help his dad. And so that's what we did. Let me see. I wanted to share some things, some personal. Um, can I back out of the reverse mortgage? I guess the new news is that gives you the right to change your mind without having to pay any penalties as long as you take the proper steps to cancel the transaction. That's where the tricky part might come in. I'm going to share some things that we experienced. This is the ugly. So my father-in-law passed, and we waited a few weeks, and then we decided, okay, let's call them so they know that my dad doesn't need any more money or whatever the thing, because we didn't know all the details. All we knew is that he had a reverse mortgage. He made sure that David and his sister were not interested in the home. When he signed up, we were all under the assumption that this house that my father-in-law lived in 
nobody would get because that was the original contract that if they died this house wouldn't be left to anybody so and I think my father-in-law still thought that all we had to do was you know the paperwork the stuff with the court and all that because we didn't think we would end up with a dime and so I was really kind of surprised because we had when we talked to them they said well you're gonna have to sell this house and I'm like why this is a reverse mortgage because things had changed all of a sudden the house needed to be sold by us so we had to pay a real estate agent and we were so blessed because we have a friend who is a real estate agent and she does marvelous work so she does great work and I would recommend her in a heartbeat the and she's she knew about we told her about the reverse mortgage we didn't know a lot of stuff about the house we just we went and visited we didn't really want the house but so after he passed we discovered that we now have to sell this house and we were like we were kind of like you got to be kidding and my sister-in-law and her husband thought no when he signed it this is the way it went so that being said that was a hiccup in how we thought we were going to move forward so we're following the program from the probate court and what we had to do and so we had to um, get our daughter to move out my daughter did have an option to buy the house she didn't have the money so she ends up we end up having to put the house on the market and so in this interim in the winter she's trying to figure out where do I go with my children and she was there because she was you know kind of making sure that he was okay if he had a medical appointment bring him to the hospital or if there was an emergency and she did bring him to the emergency room a few times and he would be in the hospital for a few days or so so that was a blessing to us that she was able to do this and there's other things that I'm not going to share in here because it's very very stressful when you have a family person that you love dearly living in a place and they all of a sudden have no place to go think about it if you were living there and all of a sudden you find out that oh I have no home so if you're going to stay there make sure that there is a backup cash backup to buy the house but then again if my father-in-law didn't need cash we wouldn't have that right so you personally need to have that kind of backup and most people don't now the nice thing about the reverse mortgage is it does allow older people to have a little bit a better sense of their availability of funds confidence but as the house was getting paid down he was paying up there was getting less money so we thought there was really nothing left and but the value of the house changed that so the house was worth it so we had our friend come in give us an estimate of the house and then I was telling her the, the can I say crap that the reverse mortgage was giving us I was like just give it to him she goes no 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 you have enough money in equity of this home that you'll be okay do not give this to the reverse mortgage company because they will make a killing and I said what do you mean she says if you sign it over to them you are missing out she couldn't give me a dollar amount because we didn't sell the house yet so but she says trust me on this and it's hard to trust when you're talking dollars and cents it's really hard because even as an heir you are not necessarily responsible for people who have passed with their debts and stuff unless you were married to them so the one thing the nice thing is with her availability to this particular law firm we were able to have an option to talk we got some consult and then they said they would take over all of it for us but it was going to cost us some money and we just my husband and I are very frugal people and we didn't know how that would end up and honestly when you get the lawyers involved if it goes above and beyond what you can afford after the house closes you end up having to pay that and we didn't have that kind of money so we decided to try this on our own it was a nightmare I do not recommend anybody doing this if you don't have the resources to buy the house and then sell on your own to get them out of the picture 
So, and the heirs will be harassed. <laughs> so the first time I called, my husband gave them authority to talk to me. Every time I called, my husband had to be here so that they could say, please talk to my wife. And he was getting annoyed. This was a very stressful time for both my husband and I. I was really actually kind of surprised that he and I did okay. But there was so much going on. And I just, so, where was I going with this? Okay, so even though we called them, the person was very, very nice. And she says, these are the things you have to do. No problem. So that's what we did. We faxed stuff to them. We got a fax number or a fax email. We got a fax number and we also got an email later. The fax, they said they didn't get. So we faxed again. They didn't get. This is a rotten, rotten thing. This is not customer service. This is a bank harassing you. So I said, okay, give me an email because they said, oh, you can email it to us. Every email I got came back that it wasn't valid. So then I get back. I said, listen, I need an email that is authentic. And what I had done was I sent certified letters to the mortgage company. So finally they gave us this daddy at mortgage. I'm like, who writes daddy as <laughs> there's a, there, it's an acronym for something else, but it's like, really? So that's what they used. And so we ended up finally getting that off. I would send certified letters because I didn't trust them. And we paid the taxes in the first quarter of this, this year because we did not trust them. We didn't have to, but I didn't know that. So finally, after months of dealing with them, while we're trying to get the house set up to sell and so forth, the mortgage company continually harassed us. Weekly, if not twice, I would get phone calls every night and my husband wasn't home yet, and they would just leave a voicemail. You need to contact us because we have some important, we have a debt to collect and da 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 But call between the hours of, I think it was eight and four. It's six o'clock at night they're giving this message. They kept doing this. So finally, and when I, we did call, they harassed us. They harassed us over everything. And it's like, we already gave you that. We already, did. well, we need it again. We need this. They, there was always something more that they were trying to get out of us. And finally, I said, my, I finally got somebody who would do this. I said, get my phone number off that. I said, you have no authority to have my phone on that call list. Well, this is the number you gave. I said, to reach us, to work together, to resolve the situation. Not for you to call me two to three nights a week and harass me after hours. It didn't allow me to call you or talk to somebody. And the numbers would come in unknown numbers. They wouldn't even have the bank number or name on it, on the caller ID. None of that. So if people wonder why I don't pick up my phone, <laughs> I don't know who's calling. And a lot of times right now it's politics. It's people trying to sell me something. <clears throat> and so it's, I'm one of those people that just gets annoyed with that stuff. So I don't answer my phone. Friends, <laughs> you know how to get through on my cell, on the voicemail. Just start talking to me. I know your voice and I know if you're, if you're really who you are. Then again, there's other things going on too. Now the thing is, while we were working on this, I thought it was quite interesting that they were, they went out of business, they filed bankruptcy and they have a new bank. That made me realize we're in trouble because what happened is the interest rate, the payback amount started going up. Then we started getting fees, monthly fees. One of them being they had a home inspector drive by every month. And now my daughter lived there with her two little ones and she has, she had um, cameras out too. So she knew if people were coming by and I'd say, no, you're not. I don't want that fee. Oh, we have people going out. I said, no, you don't. Not until the house was on the market and you hear her clipping away because she says, is your house on the market now? And I said, yeah, I've already sent that. So she's going on the computer and she goes, well, isn't your house? And she started describing things. I said, yes, it is. But it's interesting that now you can identify our house because you didn't have that. I said, there is nobody going by that house inspecting it. Nobody. 
Nobody's gone up to the door. None of that of which you said would happen. She goes, oh no, we have evidence. <laughs> I got so tired of the lies. I'm just like, you know, I don't know what God's reward for you in hell or heaven is, but God bless you. I pray that you can handle it because we were, my husband and I were getting very, very stressed and it was a horrible experience. This is why I'm on here to share with you. Please, whatever you can do, don't do a reverse mortgage because if you are leaving your home for a family member or a loved one to take over, to do all the probate stuff and everything, it's a nightmare for them. And the best thing you can do is when you pass to have a lawyer take over, especially if your house doesn't have a lot of stuff going on. So that's the best thing that I can advise you. And like I said, they kept adding extra fees. There was a fee for this. There was huge interest fees. And I just I just didn't like how dishonest they were. The weekly phone calls, inaccurate emails, and no real contact. Every time I called, it was a different person. And they would have to go up and look at the notes and say, oh, well, they told you this. And I said, yeah, what are we going to do about it? Well, they told you wrong. Folks, I am serious. A reverse mortgage is a living nightmare for whoever you leave behind to have to deal with this mess. It is not for the faint of heart. Now, I'm a very assertive person, yet when I get ticked because of how I'm disrespected, they kind of get it back. I mean, I was very firm. I wasn't mean. I just had a very firm voice. <laughs> When my husband got on the phone towards the end, he lost it. I just like, no, you give me the, tell them I, I will. Talk. And he's going on and on with them. This is how agitating. He thought, you know, he gave them permission. He has written permission for me to talk with them. All of this, every single time they would not talk to us or talk to me. So he had to be home when I called, which made it complicated because he's at work and the hours that they say that I can call back. So we did eventually get our number off. And so once the house sold and we did have some money that David and his sister are will be splitting once the probate is completed, once we hear back from the judge. And that should have happened already, but for some reason we don't understand the dynamics. We don't get an answer. So when it happens, it happens. And that's not something that either of us are like big deal. It's like it's, it is a big deal, but it's one of those things that we can't sit back and worry about things. So the house sold. We put the money in the bank because we cannot spend this money until the judge comes back and says, okay, this is how I want you to divvy up the remaining funds. One thing you want to do, whether you are a person who has been um, entrusted to do the estate, whether reverse mortgage or not, Keep diligent um, logs of your contacts, your communication, even if you are frustrated to no end. Keep in line with that. Keep, keep those records because that'll be very important because that's your time spent. And you want to make sure you jot down everything that you've talked about, most especially with this reverse mortgage, because you don't want to catch them in a lie. You don't want them lying to you. They will. But it's a nightmare for the family members who are left behind. So that's why I wanted to come on. I had mentioned it earlier when we were going through all this stuff. I call it stuff. I feel that it was criminal. I feel that they were dishonest. But in this world today, and this all started long before the world collapsed a few years back, people are in business to make money. Always, always remember that. They will come in... <clears throat> excuse me, with the reverse mortgage. Hold on a minute. Sometimes you need a glass of water. My apology. So do your due diligence and know that. Um, and I do think our parents, as they get older, they want to leave an inheritance to their family. But if it's something that they're borrowing against and stuff, they may decide, no, I don't. I don't really care what happens after I leave. And he didn't have that attitude of not caring about his family because he already checked. He did his due diligence. But as they changed the mortgage amount, you know, they kept redoing it. The last time they came, 
like I think it was a year before he passed, they came in trying to convince him to up it, which would have been to their advantage. The reason is when you re-sign the whole value of the house, they get it all, which that's smart thinking. For us kids, we really didn't care. But now that we went through this process and the profit that we made off the house that was able to pay the real estate, was able to pay the taxes, was able to do everything and still leave something for David and his sister, which we were very blessed. We feel that God had his hands in this. But after I took, I want to share this, I took my phone number off. And you think everything is going to be done with. They wrote, they did end up sending me um, a check that we threw back into the bank. Any monies we get from anything. We had um, one company owed us money. We got that. When somebody dies, don't plan on getting your check in a week. It takes four to eight weeks before you get your money. Not a big deal. We just put it in the bank account because we knew that the judge was going to, she wasn't going to make the answer tomorrow. So you want to make sure that you're ready, that if you're planning on the money, don't plan on it too soon because you're not going to get it right away. This is it has to go through probate because it's a decent size amount. Now, if it was $50, you wouldn't have to worry about it and you can take the 50 go out to dinner. Well, one person could. <laughs> in today's market, that's about all you can go out with. But keep in mind that those are things. Now, I think I'm kind of... What I wanted to finish off saying is when we told them to take the phone off their... Um, their charts they said you know they felt like they couldn't reach us because they were sending things to the house but we had a PO box which um, which we had them sent to and I was fortunate I already had this the PO box that I have for myself already set up so we didn't have to buy another PO box so I just had all the mail forwarded over there once the house was sold everything was being forwarded over there even prior to the house selling so all of a sudden a month later we get and mail a piece of mail in our PO box stating they're trying to get a hold of us and we have we don't have the right address we don't know how to get hold of you and I'm like but you got our PO box <laughs> yes you do because when you use a PO box what they do is after a certain time frame the mail starts going back to the business and so on it it will have a PO box so they used that, so they had it, and they start harassing you. They weren't asking for anything. We just we just said, this is enough. It's in a folder we don't look at. Because once the judge comes back and everything is final, then we get to burn that folder. <laughs> we have to keep everything for tax purposes or whatever it is that we need to keep. We'll keep what we need to, but there's a lot of stuff that we don't. So that's what I wanted to share. It is a nightmare to deal with reverse mortgage companies because once somebody passes, they want to charge you extra fees. They want to harass you. They want to make you so uncomfortable that you get to the point of where my husband and I were. Just get rid of it. Sign it off. Give it to them. That's what they wanted. And they would have made a good chunk of change that David and his sister were entitled to because they were still heirs of the family. So did I? Did our nightmare turn out okay? Yeah, it turned out okay. But I can't say it was an experience that I would ever want to experience again. And as my husband and I are now filling out and trying to figure out how we want to set things up for when we pass, because it's inevitable, how do we want to do this for our children, for ourselves? Do we want to do this? We are trying to figure out what we want to do. And right now, could we use a reverse mortgage? Anybody can use money. Anybody can use extra money. I would rather keep my finances tight, continue to be frugal, and not buy things we don't need in order to stay afloat. And we just got our new um, tax bill and I'll tell you I am not thrilled and because it went up substantially and it's it's difficult because as those new tax bills come in it scares people as they get older like how are we going to afford this 
That is the question that people ask. It's a question my husband and I have asked. It's like, we can't continue to afford this. So I'm sharing all this because I got a reminder from another real estate agent that called me and she said, because I was talking to her about this kind of nightmare, and she wrote back to me. She goes, Laura, could you tell me, you know, why should I not allow my, um, she has a, a family member whose father wants to do the reverse mortgage. He's having a lot of health issues. And, you know, one of the things is, please know that if you have to go into a retirement home after a year, you don't own the house. The reverse mortgage owns the house. If he's trying to do this so he has money to pay for the medical things that he needs, I understand that. Many people are in medical debt today. The thing is, is there's some other things. I don't think they can go after your home while you're living there. But when you die, the hospital might get your home. The reality is, is when we die, we have no control over who's going to come at us for the money that's there or the asset that is there. So one of the things my husband and I are doing, this is not the case for everybody. And it's not the case for us if something drastic happens to either of us. We are trying to do our best to keep our bodies healthy. And this is one thing I share often on this channel. Do your due diligence and eat healthy because you just don't know when something's gonna happen. Yes, we can eat healthy and we can still die. But try to have your wits about you. Try to keep yourself out of the hospital, out of the clinics as much as you can. Because the less you're there, the less you're worried about with finances, health finances. In addition, if you learn about healthy eating, and remember doctors aren't trained in nutrition. They have the availability for nutrition classes. But the last I knew, and this is a couple years ago, so we could have changed. If they don't, when they do their final testing and all that, they're not tested there. They're tested on all this other stuff. So you are the one who has to be aware of what's in our foods, what you're putting into your body. Your body is a temple. It is a gift. And it's up to you to take care of it. Now, I know that people are on medications that they cannot get off of. And Dave and I are trying our best to not be on medication. My husband does use his inhaler a little bit more than I like seeing him use it. But you know what? We both like seeing him breathe. For myself, I have an inhaler that I might use once or twice a year. It's an emergency thing. But, so friends, if you are thinking about a reverse mortgage, Please do your due diligence. I plead with you. Read the paperwork top to bottom. Don't be sold by somebody there. Have a family member there that can speak on your behalf, whether it's a lawyer, an accountant, anybody that has the ability to help you. And if you don't have that, seek out somebody, a good real estate agent who has, they have to have lawyers to support their needs, but they generally have people. And I, one other thing, I called a lawyer that I networked with and I asked him for his advice. He was horrible. He says, you just don't have any, you're not gonna get nothing out of this, so just drop it. And I said, no, we do. And he was going by what he knew from what we learned years ago, but his attitude was horrible. And um, he goes, oh, by the way, how do I know you? I said, I did your alterations. All of a sudden, his mind changed because he needs alterations. And I said, no, I'm not going to do business with you. The reason is, is we need to be respected no matter where we are in life. You don't know how life is going to play out for you. If you're going to treat people bad, you know, it's going to come back on you. Like me, I'm never going to go through those banks. Ever, ever, ever. There are some other banks that we used when we were younger that we will never go back to either. And the reason is, is you want to have a bank that cares about you. Even though they're making money off you, you want to be with a bank that cares. And when it comes to reverse mortgage, know your stuff. Friends, I pray that you're doing well. I hope that you're enjoying this holiday season. It is a beautiful time of year. Please try not to go into debt. Try to give life 
during your holiday season as your gift. And if, you know, just love. Friends, I hope you're having a great day. God bless.